Naren Zade with the Hammer Bros, and I wanted to discuss the uh, topic of the week set forth by Vince Venturella. Uh, with me is Professor Chaos of the Hammer Bros. Uh, he recently played at his first GT at Unplugged and performed better than I did overall. So uh, he, the kid's got potential. So if you want to just introduce yourself, uh, Professor Chaos, and talk about you know your experience and whatever, go ahead. Um, yes, my name's Tony. Uh, I go by Professor Cash. This is kind of like a joke, but um, I've been playing miniatures for probably f almost seven or eight years now. Um, started out with War Machine and Warhammer 40K, and started, and then uh, you got me into uh, fantasy, and I'm actually pretty much addicted now and wasting all of my money and time. So uh, we we prefer the phrase investing. <laughs> In yeah, that's that's good. Let's say invest. That's a good one. Um. So anyway, we were going to talk about uh, soft scores. Um, I wanted to start with sportsmanship first. Uh, my personal feeling on sportsmanship is that it, it's important to, to the game. Uh, the problem is it's really hard when you have five great games to rank opponents and then to have that ranking count heavily towards their overall score. Um, I prefer the system of where, you know, it's one, two, like three points. And if it's, and it's just three different rankings or just pass-fail or anything where there's the smallest gap possible. But with the potential to really slam someone on sports if, you know, they are a dick or a jerk or whatever. Um, but it's really hard when you have five great games and then you have to rank guys and you know that there's going to be a large point discrepancy because of it. Yeah, uh, definitely. No, I agree with you 100%. Um... Yeah, I mean, my first GT was unplugged. They did a great job. Uh, everything about it, I enjoyed it. Um, I definitely was a little bit surprised about how uh, the sportsmanship was done. Um, and not knocking them or anything, I think it was just that uh, when, he, when he had to do it, like I had t uh, two or three opponents that were absolutely phenomenal. Um, really great guys. I enjoyed the game. I wish I could play with them more often. Unfortunately, we're way too far in distance to play more often. But um, it sucked coming to the end of the fourth game and having to rank them one through three. Um, there was there was one individual who was definitely in last place, but ranking those guys one through three really sucked for me. Um, putting someone third, even though they might have been in a fantastic opponent, really screwed them over in sports. Um, and I wasn't really sure how the point system worked, but at the end it certainly fe felt like you know if you got a couple second and thirds and didn't get a first place, you were it's like a twelve point swing. And, uh, yeah, it was definitely the, the swing on it was just a little scary for me. I definitely agree with the, uh, you know, pass or fail or even just like, you know, I, this guy was definitely a great opponent, mediocre opponent or just terrible opponent and a lot closer point values. But either way, uh, you, you think that sports should factor into overall? Oh, absolutely. Um, I feel like if sports isn't, then what happens is you get the hyper-competitive guys that just don't give a shit how they treat people and how much of a rules lawyer they really are. Um, it's one thing to play the game by the rules and things like that, as everyone should. Um, but I just don't agree with uh, every single time you're like, oh, you know, we're going to spend 15 extra minutes reading every single you know, interpretation of this and measuring 600 times because I don't believe you, and even no matter how much we talk, like, you know, there's got to you got to have fun while you're doing it. And I feel like if there's no sportsmanship, you're going to get those guys that are just hyper-competitive and just, oh, yeah, no, that's a millimeter out. Yeah, you know, that's what the rules say. Yeah, no, screw it, and not care because there's no penalty. <laughs> that's fair. I, I definitely think that's a huge consideration as far as sports go. Uh, but it sounds like we're pretty much in agreement, and I think everyone, uh, for the most part, agrees. I don't think anyone wants to go to a large tournament where there's no sportsmanship score because they would just have a – Oh, probably yeah. have a couple bad games. And, you know, when you have to have a shitty game for two and a half hours, no one appreciates that. Uh, <clears throat> so moving on to painting, which is probably the most uh, contested, I guess, um, so of the soft scores. Uh, Skaven and AZ and I have had discussions about this, and I truly don't like the large gap that exists and people who pay for their army to have painted, and people who actually paint their own army. Because to me, it is buying points. And if you can buy points, then why can't, uh, then why can't someone who's not as good buy battle points? Or why is someone who isn't as good at sports buy battle points, or buy sports points? Like, if I show up to a GT, 
and sure, you paid to have your army painted ahead of time. Why can't I give the tournament organizer $50 for my sportsmanship score and say, listen, I want to get, you know, uh, 25% more of a sports score. So here's this 50 bucks or whatever the fee is. To me, it's essentially the same thing. Um, and then if you and then if you bring up the hobby aspect, then you need to participate in the hobby. It's not like I don't participate. It's not like everyone doesn't participate in the battle and have someone play, you know, some of the games for them because they're not the best at the game. If you're going to claim that it's part of the hobby, then you need to participate in the hobby. Like for two and a half years, I was awful at painting, and I'm still not great, but I'm I'm passable and I've learned a lot and I've gotten so much better and. That's why I think that it's really, it's really depressing when you spend a lot of time. Like I've been painting my Skaven since February, and it's you know, two hundred some, you know, two hundred models, and to put all that time and energy into it, and then to see someone who paid someone to do it, um, that's that's unfortunate when they get you know a full game's worth of points on you or more. There's a, there's a couple different points that you can look at from that. Um, I certainly agree in some aspects, and I certainly disagree in some aspects. Um, as we both know, I purchased my Chaos Army pre-painted. Um, didn't think, they didn't realize, I just kind of saw the deal and wanted to take it. Um, you know, should I get penalized for it? I don't necessarily think so. I certainly don't think I should ever win Best Painted because I didn't paint it. Um, but I also don't think that it should have hurt my score or not get counted or whatever. I'm um, not that that's what you're saying, just in general. Um, but there's other aspects of the way to look at this. So if you're talking about like, the overall hobby, then what's the difference of like someone could also say then, well, hey, you got your army on well, you know a website and you got it for 40, 50 percent GW cost, and I bought all my models brand new. Are you less of a hobbyist because you did that? No, you just got the better deal. You took the deal that you wanted to do, and that's you know an intelligent thing to do. Um, I think if, as long as you're putting the money and effort towards it, that's all that should matter. Um, you know, you got I mean you got guys that paying for ten dollar models and converting them, and they look beautiful. Um, and then see, you guys, but see, you said effort there. There's no effort. In purchasing a model. Well, I mean, I mean, I work, I mean, people work their butts off for their money. If they're willing to drop the kind of cash on, I mean, that shows just as much dedication as someone who puts in hours. I mean, but see, that's not, but see, that's not true though, because you're talking about a hobby aspect, which is painting and converting and things like that. That that should be well. I listen. I work an extra twenty hours a week, so I don't have time to get my games in. So when I go to play a game, I'm at a disadvantage. So I'm going to give you $20 to play not as well as you could or to uh, give me tips in the middle of the game so I can play up to your skill level. See, that's – I don't want to call it apples and oranges because it's not. But So here's a different way to look at it. You know, We both play football, and mm -hmm. you have more money to buy better equipment. Do you perform necessarily better? Perhaps. But then again, I could perform better with less stuff, but that doesn't – Right, but when I buy – but when I buy the equipment for an extra five hundred dollars, I'm not spotted two touchdowns. No, but maybe the type of equipment you have help you score two more touchdowns. I don't. Th do, come on, love. You really? Do, I, I'm just saying that there's there's a so, very little difference. so Tom Brady deflating those footballs. One of the Super Bowls. What you're saying? What I'm saying <laughs> that he did definitely deflate footballs, and he won the Super Bowl. Is I don't know. I'm not saying that that's one of the. Uh, games. That's a different discussion, but um, I think you just got to take it with a grain of salt. Is all. Um, like I said, I mean, these guys, you know, if you want to have a negative for someone buying their army, that's, you know, that's one thing. I think the, I think what the real thing should be is that you narrow the gap. Um, yeah, my, my army's beautiful, and I've painted armies that look decent. Not, certainly not as good as the army that I bought. But, you know, um, I definitely put the effort into the hobby. Um, but, you know... No, I will never win Best Painted. I don't ever expect to. I hope I don't. If I ever did, I'd, I'd probably hand it back to them and tell them to give it to someone else. Um, but I would also, you know, lower the gap a little bit. Well, you know, 50 points for paint is just absurd to me. Um, and I don't, it's not, you know, I agree that paint should be a part of the overall. So real quick to interrupt you, just so, just so people have a point of reference, because I don't know if everyone knows. Um, at most GTs, the scale is 100 
uh, battle and then 50 sport or 50 paint, 50 sports. It's usually 50, 25, 25. At some places, the spread's a little bit different, but that's what Tony's referring to. Yeah, sorry. If, um, yeah, so the GT that I went to, paint was out of 50 points. Um, the, I think the lowest score was a, was a 14 or a 16, and the highest score was a 48 or a 49. Um, certainly no one got 50. Um, but the differences in the armies in the paint and the score, to me, and it's not, again, it's not on any of the guys judging. It was like, I looked at a 48, and I looked at a 30. One of our guys scored a 30. And then I looked at some of the top armies, and there was a fairly large gap there. Mm -hmm. um, and But it wasn't enough to think, like, oh, man, you scored 30, and that guy scored 18 points more or 19 more points than you. He got a free game, essentially a free game. Here's a win, 20-0. Um, and I don't think the differences was worth that much. Like, oh, yeah, his army was beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, the guy who won best paint. Uh, I forget his name, um, but he's, you know, a really nice guy, really nice army, beautiful army, but, like, is it worth him getting a free game? I mean, that's cool. He put in a lot of effort. Does he deserve some bonus points? Absolutely. But, um, you know, you're talking a guy can get 60 battle points and 50 or 49 paint and be as good as someone who got 100 battle points with chess piece army. So wait, so are you so you it sounds like you're saying that you think it should play a part, but it should be uh, not so significant or the scoring should yeah. be a bit softer. So like yeah, someone so like, who may have scored a 30 no maybe should have scored like a 38 and then the gap between the best and the and a, just, an acceptable army would be like 10 points. I'm I honestly think that the points should just be less in general. Um you know, for instance, where I think it should make a difference um, anything can happen in a game of Warhammer. We're all realistic here. You can roll dice and cascade your your wizard turn one. <laughs> I don't <laughs> know can, what that's you, like. You can do you know a lot of little teeny things that don't necessarily mean you're a bad general. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean you're a bad player. It just shit happens. Sometimes points go back and forth. Um, so if someone's got that beautiful of an army mm -hmm. and the points are that close, you know, let's say it's eighty-five to ninety battle points. The points are that close. And the guy with 85 battle points has a 10 times more prettier army. You know, I'm okay with him getting 5 or 10 bonus points and making him even or even better or even higher overall. Sure. Um, what, I, what I don't like is that someone who has an off day, and I don't want to say that they, you know, they're a bad player because they're certainly not. Um, someone has a bad day, they score 50, 60 battle points, or bad weekend, 50, 60 battle points for the entire weekend capitalizes on sport, gets lucky at sports, I should say, basing on how people just happen to rank him and he lucks out on points, and then scores super high in painting, and now he's top 10 or top 5. Um, that's a huge point swing. That's like a 20, 30, 40 point, point swing. Right. Um, I mean, at, at that point, it's almost like, you know, why do we play five games? You might as well play, you know, one day of games and just line up your armies. Um it's two games worth, you know, two or three games worth of point swing. He could have not played day two and still done just as well. Yeah, I have, uh, well, that's always been my mindset. Obviously, I'm more of a, uh, can, I guess I'm more of a, I, I like playing the game more than I do painting. But, I, I mean, I love, I've, I've gotten, I've grown to love painting and, again, become more of a hobbyist. But um, my strength has always been in my play and not in my paint. Um, so when I go to events, I, I always expect to score average or close to average on paint and, make up the difference in games. Sometimes that doesn't happen because of the, subj the, the subjectivity of painting. But it's never, it's, it's hard because I understand where hobbyists want to make it count and it's a throwback to the GW days because, you know, you don't want to go to a GT and play against unpainted armies or to play against, you know, armies that are spray painted like a stoplight. Right. And I think that's really what they're trying to avoid. But uh, in my opinion, and if, I think it would be excellent if we removed the paint, the paint scoring, and you were just required to have a painted army. And when I say that, I mean to a reasonable standard. And then if it is to a certain like level, you know, with certain techniques and custom basing or whatever, you can get a couple extra points. But that will never happen. That's just the pipe dream. 
But I mean, I I mean that's that's no different than saying like, okay, we you know start everyone. You know, we can have tiers. Let's say we have tiers. Let's say it paints twenty five out of twenty five points instead of fifty. Uh, everyone starts in a tier based on. I mean, you can clearly look at an army and say, okay, this is a top tier army. Okay, this guy tries, but he's not a you know he's not a super skilled thing. Then you can also look at the armies and say, oh wow, this this guy barely put in any effort, and it's mm-hmm. not that he necessarily just doesn't have the skill. It's that he went out of his way to just not really give a shit. Um, in five or ten points, I mean, so. You get, for uh, Unplugged, they gave you five bonus points for handing in your army list on time. Mm-hmm. Very cool incentive. I actually really like that. Um, but what's the difference if I, you know, five bonus, you know, you get five more points than someone on paint. It's the same exact thing. It's not a huge deal. But it, I still think it needs to be incorporated. Paint still should be incorporated. I, it sounds like we're both on the same page, and I think I'm going to be able to summarize this pretty well. I think what we're saying is that we want to know who won the tournament. And when I say that, I mean, if you, if you get 100, you know, 16 points out of 120 for battle, there's no way that you shouldn't win the, the event through paints or through paint or sportsmanship or anything. Even if your army is, you know, borderline unpainted, uh, you know, it, or just even, even painted to the bare minimum. I mean, how, how do you feel about that? Because that's what it sounds like uh, uh, we're skirting around. Yeah, so just just to clarify a little bit, depending on how well everyone else did, if someone scores 112 points and they have GW bits just scattered on bases and, you know, no effort, no money, no anything like that. I mean, I am a fan of a little bit of a hobbyist. Um, you know, if someone buys a bunch of dwarf bits, let's say, throws a bunch of, like, random dwarf bits together in a mosh pit and paints it, I certainly don't think they deserve to win the whole entire tournament if they scored 120 battle points. Mm. Um, but I do think that if there's that much of a gap, that there shouldn't be allowed someone to catch up. So let's say he scores 110 battle points, or, or she, who Well, the perfect example here is, Pop- is Pofonia. Let's use that, I mean, because... Yeah, yeah let's uh, use that, that's perfect. Um, you did really well with Pofonia, you won Best General, congrats. Um, that's not, not a... Sure. Not a not a GW army, not a painted army. No. Um, could you have won overall? Absolutely not. I don't think anyone would disagree with that. I mean, if you do, I apologize, but not. <laughs> but at the same time, let's say you did paint all those. Let's say you bought, you know, horse miniatures and you paint them and whatever. Like they're not GW models, whatever, whatever. They gave you an average paint score, and someone scored close to you in battle points, but had a beautifully painted high elf army or something right. like that. I'd have no problem with them winning over you. But it better be close, because yeah. as long as you put in that effort, that's all that matters. Um, I don't like the big point swings. I mean, if you're 30 battle points ahead of someone, and you finish 20, I think, I mean, I'm using examples from my only GT here, so I apologize. Um, he was up like 20-something battle, 20-something points in battle overall, I think, was the next mm-hmm. highest point. Um, and he ended up, I want to say, fifth. Yeah, I think he ended correct. up in fifth place and was like twenty points behind the top place guy. Um, the top place guy scored like ninety battle points, I think it was, or ninety two, something like that. Uh, yeah. He had a great, great event, good for him. You know, congrats to him for what. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it. Um, I'm just saying that that's a huge gap. I mean, I could see if like you know the guy won by five points because you know he had the better army sports, whatever you know, whatever. But like up by twenty to down by twenty is a forty point swing yeah. based on soft scores that are really just a opinion when it comes down to it. So it sounds like that it you prefer to have paint in sports as tiebreakers. Essentially, Essentially. yeah. Like minimal Sorry. like they yeah, I mean they should have they should have their purpose, but they also shouldn't like total point swings. It's just that's not what the I mean if if that's the thing, let's let's just like paint miniatures and play Hello Kitty Island Adventure or something. <laughs> Super, <laughs> superb analogy, I guess. Um <laughs> Yeah, in my my closing argument here is when it comes to paint, if if your reasoning is um, the hobby, then I mean you should paint your own things. And if you think that being able to purchase an army and then and that you're not purchasing points, I I don't see how that's not how it is because that's precisely what it is. And sure, you might not be able to paint that well, and you want a nice army. And I'm not going to hold that against you know anybody. In fact, I spoke with a bunch of guys who had a, a, a similar opinion, 
And they said that they would rather play against a well-painted army and give up a couple points or more. Um, and I agree with them. I mean, I would much rather play against a nice army yes. than, than to play against, you know, some, uh, some gray bits or whatever. But to say that you're not purchasing points is not, it, I mean, well, to say that you're not getting points, you might not be intentionally buying them. But right. you, you're, you are getting an advantage over people who don't. And that's all. Um, but, you know, is it a real issue? Eh, not really. I mean, when I brought Batonia, I knew that, or when I brought Batonia, I knew that I would get no pain score and that it would really hold me back. But I didn't care. Um, I knew that when I brought my Skaven to Sylvania and all these other events, prior to them getting much more closer to finish, uh, I knew that that would be an issue. And, you know, I'm still working on them today, and I will be probably for a while because there's so many of them. So I think that uh, it's also just expectations, you know, knowing knowing where you're going to end up and then not being surprised when someone does outscore you on pain. Yeah, I mean, another huge thing, I mean, and, and not to add another thing onto the tail end of this, but uh, I really wish that there, there needs to be more consistency. And it's not, I mean, this is any tournament I think I've ever been a part of with any of the War Machine or 40K or whatever. Um there's a lot of there's a lot of personal opinion that goes into the soft scores. Um, someone might be the best opponent you ever played, and the next guy on the table over doesn't think so. Um, does it mean the guy's a bad guy and deserves to get a crap score? Absolutely not. He just might not have been put it as his top thing. It sucks you get shafted for points. Um, painting. Um, I will I will go on record and say that I think almost everybody in the room thought someone else should have won best painted army. And you know whoever won it, congrats. His army was still beautiful. I mean, it was. I mean, I couldn't paint that if it was my lifetime goal. Um, but um, you know what went into it was just someone's personal opinion. Someone, the judge looked at it and he goes, "You know what? I just happen to like this." You know, or, more, or the the group of judges looked at it and said, "I just happen to like this more than this." Uh, I don't really know why. I just really think that that one's beautiful. They both scored the same number. They just which one won was came up to a vote between the judges. Um, so it's kind of you know. If it's that personal opinion based, um, it's really hard to say. Well, see, that's know, the well, that's the problem with soft scores. In I mean, it is their very nature that they're subjective. There's no way to not make them subjective. Subjective, really. I mean, unless you have a checklist. But if you have a checklist for paint, then you know, it, then you can't discriminate between what it looks like. So, like with Bretonia, are the models based? Well, yes. So I would get points. Um, does the army look cohesive? Well, yes, I, I mean, I would get points. Does he have a display board? Yes, I would get points. Does he have conversions? I had the Pinkie Pie cannons. I would get points. So, yes. I mean, you're looking no at... No paint. Subtraction of a lot of points. No, there's paint. I technically painted the party cannons. So, <laughs> but the thing, like, does the model, does the army have paint on it? I mean, if you write it that way, then yes. As opposed to, does every model have paint? So, that's the problem when you get into those rubrics. And then with sportsmanship, that's just, I mean, there's, you know, I mean, did he... Let you take back a move that you might not have made, or did he, you know, do you let you take a phase that you skipped? Right. Well, that's that's. I mean, that's why I think we wanted the uh, like the you know pass or fail, or even just like the the ranking at every end of every game. Um, it makes it a little yeah. bit more. You know, was the guy a shit bag? No. Okay, then he deserves sportsmanship points. Um, was he a shit bag? Okay, then he probably deserves a you know punch and then some negative points, yeah. whatever. <laughs> I, I think keeping it simple is definitely the right answer, but things like pass fail. And yeah. you know all that. So, um, do you have anything else to add? Nothing to add. I, I'm happy. I'm very happy. I got a dwarf oh. army on the way. Big things coming this year. Lots of GTs coming this year. Professor the, uh, Chaos probably not going to win anything, but he's going to be there. He's you can. You never know. You never know. <laughs> um, and the next one we'll be going to is Keystone, which will be in PA, and that's uh, July 12th or something like that. Mid-July. So hopefully we'll see some of you guys there. Uh, I'm glad that Professor Chaos was able to join me. So for Professor Calvin and Aaron Zaid, hope you guys have a good night.